I love how the civilian units that turn into Rex eventually are live at the beginning portion. Yeah. <laughs> and it's actually two transports that just look like it's the wreckage of one, but uh, it's two. Really? I didn't know that. So, okay, so the two halves meet up in the mountains and make it look like a broken wreckage. Right. <laughs> nice touch from the map maker. Yeah, really is. So we got Zlo versus Agix. Zlo going first land, actually first and second land, third air, with a rather conservative power generator build. I hope he's getting more pgens online with his engineers. If this was and... my build, I would power stall the same. Yep. Agix is going first and second land with no immediate plans for an air factory and getting up a few PGENs as well. So, yeah, looks like it's going to be interesting to see how these guys balance their eco. I'm assuming reclaim? Reclaim is always the answer. The trees are not so good. I don't think there is a good way of scaling up uh, your power if you didn't build a lot early on on Twin Rivers. You do have some Zlo reclaim, but uh, tree reclaim is difficult on Twin Rivers. Yeah, Zlo maintaining his early game credentials of always going for a lab. Mechmarine headed out towards the front. I Still sticking with it, I have never seen Zlo play a game where he did not go for assault bots. So, somebody send me the replay if he hasn't. I did just realize that Zlo is actually building PGENs with the ACU primarily. Only two mass extractors and engineers went out for the additional mass extractors and then yeah. are picking up reclaim later to that's fill in the gap. That's that's meta on Twin Rivers because your ACU cannot build all four mass extractors without walking. That's why people go three PGEN, uh, two mixes with ACU and the uh, engineer number one and two build uh, the core mixes instead. Gotcha. There's some people I thought it who... made. Like, there are some people who do um, two power generators, two mixes with ACU, and then the remaining two power, uh, sorry, remaining two mixes also with uh, with engineers, but that's going to, uh, to power stall. So, uh, important reminder that uh, if you want to build uh, your two core mixes with engineers instead of the ACU, that you build three power generators with the ACU instead of just the standard two. Speaking of power stall, Adrix went into a rather heavy one with uh, two engineers assisting the ACU on a land factory build. He's getting more power generators down now with additional engineers and then has got a total of nine land factories queued in his home base, walking his ACU over to the left. Zlo is looking much more balanced on his economy. He's got two more PGENs going down, then the air factory, and looks like Hydro with an additional air factory queued in the back. But both of these guys are building on scant power. I I am amazed that they're going to be able to make this work. I need way more power generators than that. Yeah, same here. I think 11 pigeons before the third factory is a pretty good amount on Twin Rivers. But I guess, I guess we'll just remain plebes forever. They are they are probably uh, a bit conservative with their expansion. Like there are two things I find very strange. First is that uh, Zlo is uh, picking up the side expansion rather late, and uh, Ajux, interestingly, uh, went uh, for... Oh, that was probably a misclick. Anyways, uh, he, he is going uh, to the side expansion with his ACU instead of, uh, instead of an engineer. That's a non-standard, I guess. It does make sense though, because it's much uh, much more unlikely that your ACU will get picked off by a T1 tank. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah, and then true. I am amazed that the forward mass has not been claimed yet. Usually you think that the mass gets sucked up as early as possible so that it doesn't fall into the hands of your opponent. But this is super late. We're looking at like four and a half minutes before the first engineer makes it up to the front. I think that's normal though. Like going for the mass early is a team game thing. On 1v1, I would not go for it fast. I guess you're not going to be able to spend it since your power is so low. So it doesn't yeah. really make sense to get it that early. On 1v1, okay. uh, on a map where you have so many mixes and they're so close together and actually timed in a way that your expanding engineers arrive at the same time, you uh, are not going to be limited by mass. You're going to be limited by build power and power. And uh, that's why you don't want to pick up the extra mass in the center. I think if you have an extra leftover engineer for whatever reason, perhaps because you've been assisting your engineer producing factory, 
then you would rather use it to cliff build one of the islands because it can uh, save you some extra power that would otherwise go into a transport. Gotcha. I love the Selen up on the front. It's actually enabled the cloak on it, and he's letting it sit right at the forward portion of the mountain to see which way units that are coming out of the factories go. It's giving them a nice little intel advantage without having to actually build a radar. One of the awesome things about Selen's. I guess moles have it to a certain degree too, but if anything with radar coverage comes nearby, the uh, moles are going to get picked up immediately. Got a couple of tanks pushing forward for Ajax. He does have a slight unit count advantage, ever so slight, but I think things are going to end up coming out pretty well even. Zlo's already got five land factories online and has queued up a total of eight. Like I said before, we've got nine queued on the north, but only four of them have been built so far, so Ajax is going to slip on his unit count as Zlo keeps scaling up. Knowing Zlo's playstyle, he's probably not going to go for any T2 mexes until, or unless the game goes past like the 12 or 13 minute mark. Whereas Ajax, I, I don't know, he might go for one. Possibly. I'm not really a good judge. Like, it's just speculation at this point, I guess. What I do I've find seen... very interesting is how uh, Zlo has a very, very greedy build, but he's making it work. Like last time I checked, he had full mass bar, but uh, he was of course uh, like spending more than he had. But, uh, like the storage capacity made it work, and like he's got so many more factories, and he's also building factories at a faster pace than uh, Ajax. Yeah. And he also got his air earlier, which is why he has like a slight production lead in air units. Ajax Plus, is this... two mass behind, so the economy is pretty even. But Zlo's got seventeen hundred reclaim. And Ajax has only got 1,500. Pretty low on both counts, but the slight advantages both go Zlo's direction. Second air factory for uh, Zlo, which means he can make a transport. And uh, Ajax is forced to make fighters if he wants to stay competitive in air. He's making a transport too, though, which means he's probably going to fall behind in the air fight. Like, if Zlo engaged in air now, he could win. I guess it's hard if to tell does... for him. If he does get one of the side islands, though, that's going to give him a pretty hefty advantage because he will get the four mechs out there plus all the reclaim. That could help to catch him up. I've seen so many games before with Zlo where he will not get mass extractors for so long that it ends up dooming him at the end of the game because he gets so far behind in economy. But... Uh, it, it does work out well for him at the earlier portions of the game because his unit count is so much higher. The question is whether or not you can win in the first few minutes. Although it does look like he is getting a T2 Mass Extractor and a second one. Maybe I'm conflating Zlo and Zok. I think I am. I think Zok is the one that I was thinking of. No T2 Mexes for Ajax so far, though. He is continuing to fall behind in score and has not been able to secure even his full rear expansions. So he's being a bit hampered by his Lowe's units just popping up here and there all over the map. Oh, interesting development from Ajax. He's pooling his units. Like he pretty much had a defeat and detail advantage for the entire game so far because he always had like a large army and his Lowe's streamed in low unit counts into the army and that's why he lost. Now he tried to uh, capitalize on that same advantage again by regrouping his uh, units and going for the bottom expansion, but uh, it failed because uh, the supply route is just too long. Like those yeah. units travel forever, but it was an interesting attempt to watch. Looks like we're about to see a fight for the south side. Engineers dropping from Ajax on the island that's already being claimed. We've also got T2 land out for Zlo. He's building a T2 engineer, Sparky's actually. That's going to be interesting to see how he uses those. May queue up a drop? Not sure. One uh, way or the other, though, he will put them to use. It's just a guess, but I'm thinking TML in the center of the map and point defense in the expansion later. And Looks like Ajax is going to get the reclaim on that engineer. So he is going to be able to take the island. Right, yeah. He may also just drop the Sparkies on the island. He can use them for that. Might play to his advantage if he did so. 
Looks like Ajax is trying to take advantage of the troop movement to the south and get some units around on a run by slow building wall sections over to the far left to try and prevent exactly that thing. But since Ajax stopped, I don't think he's going to be entirely successful. Zlo's going to have time to react. Looks like he's just pooling units. Zlo trying at every opportunity to slip units into the back end. He's got two tanks over on the left that are just going to try to get up into the mass extractors there. He was able to kill the two mass extractors on the right, if you saw a little bit earlier as well. So he's just kind of harassing Ajax into a standstill. As long as getting his T to power now, and uh, I think we're about to see some large scale pillar spawn. Like, it looks a bit like a less extreme version of Kai's Cube pillar build. There is a T2 point event going down on the front line, which at first would seem like a bad idea because obviously it's immobile and therefore that mass can't go rescue other locations on the map. But since he is walling in the left, if he's successful at that, he'll be able to focus the unit's pathfinding past this T2 point defense and he can fight around it. It'll give him a pretty solid advantage on the left side. Plus, it's creating a huge reclaim field. He's going to integrate this back into his economy and scale up his pillar production. Looks like he's trying to do a similar thing on the right with the Sparky over there, but I don't think he's going to have enough units to back it up. He's going to get the Sparky out, try to keep it alive. Yeah, that's going Sparky, to work so fast. Yeah, Sparkies have a decent amount of damage, but they're definitely not a mainline tank. They can defend themselves from a couple of T1 units, though. Yeah, I think uh, it's especially the micro that makes Sparky's nice. You can. I love the drop and counter drop. Ajix getting over to the left side island as well. Five engineers versus four, but he's not queuing them. So I don't know who is going to win this one. A six, actually, for Ajix. Oh, yeah, the other two in the back. I did not see those. If they get a... Yeah, so it's six versus six. If they get a point defense down, Zlo hasn't realized that those engineers are over there quite yet. So that would be an easy wipe for control of both islands for Ajax. That would be huge. Looks like two support factories and a third upgrading. So a total of four T2 factories for Zlo. He is definitely scaling up his pillar production. But that south side does not look very good for him. Yeah, a bit of a late reaction. It's still going to be his reclaim, though. And since it was only T1 Nexus, which weren't enough, yeah, even upgrading, he can uh, just uh, rebuild that and uh, net out positively from that. He can drop engineers to rebuild it faster. Interestingly, uh, Adrix only completed his first mass extractor upgrade, while uh, Zlo has been echoing a lot more. Or actually a lot more? Maybe not a lot more. Is it just two Nexus for Zlo? <clears throat> Slow has got, yeah, just the two. Hasn't even started on his rear ones yet. Uh, right. Looks like Slow is on 47 income with 4,500 reclaim. Ajax at 4,400 reclaim with 63, 65 income. So Ajax pretty far ahead on the mass count. That's mostly due to the islands, I think. Looks like 880 versus, come on. 880 versus 1060. So Zlo does have a pretty significant power advantage. Air control in the hand of Ajax, but uh, all the air is operating at the top island. Unfortunately, uh, Zlo doesn't have a transport or he could drop pillars. Like, uh, I find it surprising to see that uh, Zlo actually managed to get uh, 20 pillars on the map and Ajax He's just working on his, uh, like, first Ilshable. He's actually got a T2 engineer out from that. that factory. He's not even yeah. building Ilshibas yet. That's true. And he's not planning support factories either. He's got some of his T1 factories paused, but he's not got any supports in production. So he is going to get thrashed if he doesn't get some form of defense online and quickly, because there's a lot of pillars moving around to the right side, and he's even dwindling in his T1 unit counts. He'll have to make some uh, T2 point defense with his uh, newly built engineers, but he doesn't have intel over this area, so he may not know. 
Ajax has got two T2PD next to his commander. So he's pretty safe from land units on that side. ACU is just kind of facing off from across the gap, eyeballing each other, thinking about what they might be able to do. But on the right, this is a bit more dicey. Ajax is definitely going to lose his forward mass extractors. Those tanks might be able to slip around through one of the gaps to the rear. But then again, Zlow might fall back and just preserve his unit count advantage. It's a bit sad to see that Slow has horrible intel. Like, if that scout, yeah, it goes over there. Like, it's a little late, but he could just thread click his army into Ajax base and kill most of it. He no just doesn't intel know whatsoever on that side. Yeah, you can see how outdated uh, his scout image is. He hasn't even scouted the uh, T2 factory yet, but uh, it produced uh, five T2 engineers. He's got a T1 air scout over there now. He does realize how bad his intel is, so he is rectifying that situation. Looks like 49 income for Zlow and 73. Getting up towards a 25 mass advantage for Ajax. This is not going well for Zlow. Slacked off a little bit too much, I think, on the aggression. Well, I believe that uh, Zlow has uh, so many more units. Oh, yeah, yeah, what, what you're saying is correct. Like, he should have pushed earlier, but he didn't have the intel for it. But uh, I do think that this uh, unit advantage Slow has is going to count now, because... If he pushes up, he'll be able to take that base. Yeah, Ajax, Ajax is essentially just over eco right now. I like, like the pillar drop on the north, but unfortunately there were enough T1 units to deny that island seizure. Slow is trying his best to get that away from him. Looks like tanks going to the left for Zlow might try to slip around into the back again now that all of the units are over on the right. Pillars are faster than Ilshavas, correct? Oh, okay, I think I think I know what this is. Uh, yeah, yeah, pillars are faster than Ilshavas, right. But uh, Ilshavas have higher range, so they can kite a bit, I believe. But anyways, like Zlow is doing gun and uh, nano, and he's moving his uh, army quite obviously next to this mountain. So I believe uh, he's trying to like tank the fire of the point defense Ajax has with his ACU, and uh, he's trying to uh, move in the army to kill. No, he's not doing that actually. Like he looked like he was going for a pincer maneuver on the ACU, but yeah. then gave up when the ACU started moving towards the units. I think Ajax knew what was going on, and is now consolidating his forces so that he doesn't get caught off guard by that. <clears throat> I'm just wondering whether uh, the reinforcements will come in time. Like, Ajax has T3 land now. That was a very quick transition, actually. Wow. Uh, I guess <laughs> there was a reason for these T2 engineers to be there and not more Ilshavos. So essentially, like, T2 skip for Ajax. Non-standard. He's seven. already got an Otham out. Yeah. That's going to be bad news for those pillars. I like how these guys are poking and prodding at each other. You can see where they're picking up intel on what the other person is doing and just ever so subtly adjusting their positioning to account for it. Right, yeah. I think uh, Zlo may have had a realistic chance at uh, pincering Ajax ACU if he hadn't moved his army uh, there so fast. If he had like pretended to attack uh, on the right side and then brought the army there later, Ajax may not have predicted this uh, potential attack. Like, there is a attack. TAC launcher online, two TAC launchers online. Oh. Looks like that's at the T2 mechs in the rear of the base, just barely skirting the TMD over on that side. Zlo's got one more T2 mechs than he had, so he's up to three now. Progress! He could actually go for tax snipes on the T2 point defense that are around. That would probably help him out. I would love to see attack missile land on that ACU. Ajax is just watching them go overhead without reacting whatsoever. He could have gotten a free 6k damage on that commander. Zlo actually very much respecting the land units of Ajax. Perhaps a little too much. Ajax had so much time to make those uh, Othums. There are three on the front line, one more coming up from the rear. 
So he's at the numbers he needs now to start seriously threatening these T2 forces. Looks like Zlo's positioning for an overcharge. I think it's going to come down to who has intel on what. Whether or not that's going to die. Ajax knows exactly where the ACU is and he is drawing his Othams back. And Zlo does have everything tagged. He's actually streaming scouts across. So he does know exactly where he needs to be to get the job done. Sniper boss, interesting choice. Well, I mean, if you want to harass a commander... <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, how you stop a gun push. It. Absolutely, yeah. Good luck getting in range of them. Wonder what those T1 two bombers. bombers are for. Yeah, I don't understand, but... I guess it's low. It doesn't have to make sense. It just has to work. The T1 bombers would make a very effective tool for dealing with the sniper bots. Which so are that's shielded, not though. to be underestimated. Is Ajax power stalling? He is. He is, yeah. He's power stalling quite heavily, in fact. Probably maybe... those two very expensive Seraphim shields he's running. Yeah, maybe as low as aware of that. You need around uh, one power generator for T3 land, another one uh -huh. for assisted air, and uh, two shields also. One power generator. So Ajax can comfortably add two more power generators without really wasting any mass. You can spend the power. Seraphim shields, they're strong, but man, they're expensive, both in mass and in power cost to run. It's kind of brutal. But if you do have them over your base, you're going to be able to outfire base most of the other factions, so. Zlo getting a T1 anti-air down next to his commander. I guess it's the only thing he can build since he's a T1. He opted for the nano upgrade, but that doesn't seem like it provides a tremendous amount of protection. He does have mobile flak up in the rear though, and he's going for clink hammers. Yep, that's, on earth? <laughs> that's probably his uh, sniper bot counter. And you can see he's going to dance around this uh, little cliff to uh, make sure the sniper bots can hit him. They have a very low firing arc and uh, he's probably going to use that as a shield. These T2 artillery are actually going to be able to reach the T3 HQ, so he might be able to do some damage to that, but the sniper bots have already moved up. Yeah, he's Ajax aiming for is... the sniper bots with the uh, yeah. bomber and the hardy. T1 bomber's coming in, but the Just shield's going to come time. up. Just, Just in time. Just in time, yeah. That's close. Ajax, the creep is real, man. Yeah. It would be nice Those to see. Off... It would be nice to see Ajax uh, making a shield and moving the slippers left to uh, take out the point defense and attack the base. I think he could do it. Like Zlo has no T3 land yet. You know what would be the only thing better than the T2 mobile shield creep? Actually, building a T3 mobile shield. T2 stationary shield creep, sorry. Right, yeah. T3 mobile shields for the sniper boss. Yeah. And for the slippers. Like, some overcharge protection would be handy. Zlo might get into overcharge range here, speaking of, but no, he had to divert slightly. Otham's gonna take out the firebase, and that is the end of Zlo's aggressive stance. Right, oh, look, yeah. south side, there's a six striker drop, or pillar drop. More than enough to take out that single T1 point defense if they just pushed in, but it looks like he is going to opt for going around the backside. Adric's still uh, equaling very aggressively, I think. It's the, the Pigeon that's consuming so much mass. Makes sense. T2 Air Factory Online still building transports, so Zlo is going to recycle his initial transport, head around to the rear. He's already got another group of pillars in the back of Ajax's base that has hit the mexes over there. Uh, Otham coming out of the factory that may be able to defend, but Slow's going to take a huge chunk of economy out of Ajax's pocket. This is, this is a little bit of a turn here. The question is going to be whether or not he can survive against the Othams and sniper bots that have already been built. I think Twin Rivers is a very difficult map to make uh, drop works, uh, drops work reliably. Not so much because you can't get them to land, but rather because it's so easy to rebuild and reclaim on Twin Rivers. I think Ajax has been completely ignoring the air game for far too long. He's building interceptors like Mad now, 
but these T2 transports are going to have free reign over most of the map for far too long. He paused his uh, power production. Uh, no, sorry, he paused his air production while he only had one power generator but two shields and the uh, T3 land factory. So that actually makes sense. Yep. Zlow killing off all five Othams on the left with that ACU. OP overcharge, man. Yeah, he can't drop on top of them to kill them. Oh no! The transport dropped short. <laughs> oh, that's frustrating. All those pillars got left. Yeah, he's picking them back up and dropping again. Yeah, he, he did notice. <laughs> so not having any air control is actually uh, actually bad for Ajax now because he cannot afford to attack. It's just going to get overcharged by uh, Zlo's calm drop. All of the T2 maxes in the back are, well, all but one are going to go down. Also lost the mass extractors to the right of the main base, and he's lost the South Island. It, the North Island is also severely threatened. If he built a T1 point defense with all of the engineers that were up there, he would be fine, I think. But it looks like that's not going to happen. Did you realize that uh, Zlo actually focus fired the T3 factory in the back with the pillars instead of fighting against the slipper, and he killed it? Yeah. I don't know why though, because if he had killed the Otham first, he could have kept all of his pillars alive and then continued to kill the rest of the base. I think that was really bad targeting priority. I think that might have been an HP consideration. Like killing this HQ is a, is a huge victory, I guess. Like, it's, it's, I just do find it unlikely that the Slipper dies and the HQ dies too. Yeah. Got a second drop on the left side island. Zlow is cleaning house with these pillars. This is amazing to watch. <laughs> Looks Ajax. like Ajax. Yes, that was kind of funny. Like he just, uh, that was a mass stall because of the raid. So he's self destructed all his factories. But now he uh, killed some of the raid units and he's getting reclaim. And because and he's he got all the mass, he is built power bottlenecking and he's rebuilding the factories he just destroyed. Oh, oh, oh. no! Yeah, I Tax saw that. <laughs> Yeah, that was a lot, but uh, wow. The question is just going to be: Does Lo have anything to finish him off? Fifty-three mass per tick for Ajax, seventy-seven for Zlo. Yeah, interesting comeback, eco-wise. Thanks to all those guys. That drops, is I guess. ridiculous. I was so incredibly worried for Zlo on this one because it seemed like everything was falling apart there. But he just decided, hey, you know what? My opponent doesn't have much air. Let me just try dropping all of these units everywhere and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what do you know? It actually worked. Considering this is a Twin Rivers game, it's actually extremely interactive. Yeah. Not your typical turtle 20 minutes of nothing. It's kind of like, it's kind of like your odd Gap of Rohan game where typically Gap of Rohan is the most static thing that you could possibly ever play. But then you'll get into that like one match out of 25 where there's calm drops and there's Corsair snipes and there's people building and counter building across the mountains. And all of this crazy stuff is happening and you're like, oh, come on, did you forget that there's a choke point in the middle or something? Right, yeah, that's actually a good comparison, I think. Twin Rivers might just be the Gap of Rohan among uh, 1v1 maps. More pillars dropping on the right-hand side. So that's going to be able to come up through the base again. Ajax is getting his mexes built back, but his oh. map control is slowly collapsing. This was beautiful. Did you see that? The shield is being Janus. Yeah, it actually died. Janus, oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Like, he took out the he shield with the TML. The mana, though. Yeah, he, he didn't kill it, but uh, but he killed the shield, more or less for free. Because the TML took out the shield dome, and uh, the Janus took out the shield generator. Excellent. T3 shift for Zlo. He's actually pulling Percival's out now. Interesting choice. Does, yeah, since he does have the economy advantage, he should be able to quickly overwhelm the amount of Othams that Ajax has on the field. This game feels a bit like uh, T3 Mobile Arty. Uh, to me. Like, if I was low, I would probably go for that, but uh, I guess you can make personals work. They're good units. He is gonna have to break that firebase in the middle at some point. Yeah, also Although... the sniper bots and the slow slippers. That's something you can uh, you can kill with uh, T3 Mobile Arty. He's got a lot of transports. He might just drop the Percivals in the back behind the uh, behind the point events. Skip the firebase entirely. 
Well, Ajax I... does have air now. I guess if Ajax doesn't have good intel, then he cannot if... use the air. But the intel is actually good, I think. The intel is if good. only that anti-air pillar in the top right had had a little more time to fire at those interceptors on the ground. All right, Ajix is at 57 mass per tick, and he's got 54 interceptors under his control. It looks like Zlo is back a little bit with only 42 interceptors, but it's actually not that bad. And he's building interceptors quite quickly. Also making a T3 air shift, so he will be able to maintain control of the air later into the game. Uh, Zlo at 91 mass per tick, so he's got very close to double the economy that Ajax has. Sniper bot action now. But he's retreating. Respecting the Percivals. And coming back later, I suppose. Five sniper bots, what is that? Like one and a half K per shot on the snipers? I don't know. Of damage? Uh, those are Seraphim sniper bots. I just know that their fire cycle is uh, slower and the strike is uh, stronger than mine, but uh, I don't know their stats. Because you obviously own the uh, the Aeon faction. Right. <laughs> All right, uh, sniper bot fire, 116 damage per second, 580 per projectile. If they are in the sniper configuration, uh, the fire rate is slower, and it's 2,000 damage per projectile. Those were probably not in the sniper configuration, so five hits at once would strip 3,000 HP off the ACU. So every time those run through the firing cycle, taking for granted that they all hit, uh, that is one-third of the health off of Slow's ACU. Drops they, in the rear. Even though they're called sniper bots, they actually miss a lot. They can't handle if the ACU moves. Don't they have a firing accuracy reduction if they're on the move? That too, yeah. There's some fire yeah. randomness when they move, but even when they're stationary and the ACU dodges, they tend to miss. I like how Zlo realized that the attack launcher is going to die in a, a, like a second, which is why he uh, fired the missile just randomly in the direction of Ajax ACU. Because if he's going to lose yeah. the missile anyways, he might as well try. It's uh, those little things that... Uh, tell you how good these players are, I think. Well, you've got an interesting matchup in the middle. You've got Percival's shielding and a gun nano commander versus Otham's snipers and a gun nano T2 commander. Both of these players continuing to use their ACUs on the front line well into the late stage of the game. I love uh, Zlo on the south side, those two Othams that were slipping by, he dropped two Percivals right in front of them in order to kill them off and keep them out of his base. Lovely pickup there. Those sniper bots are really uh, mesmerizing. They're just, like, they're kind of hovering, I can see that, but they just don't look like they have anything that could make them move. They're just floating. Like Since they sport. are hover, dude, those can move on the water, right? <laughs> no, they can't, I think. Like, well, dang. I don't think so. Yeah, they can't. They can hover, but they cannot move uh, on the water. That's actually interesting. I love how the Percivals, they move up, they get into range of one of the Othams, and then just erase it from existence and retreat. <laughs> the T2 shielding is saving Zlo's forces from those sniper bots right now. They're harassing, but they're not really able to get any effective damage in because Zlo's unit mix is good. Yeah, Zlo's pushing now. Also moving a drop around to the left-hand side. Looks like going for the back of the base here uh, to kill off the engineers and the mechs that are getting rebuilt. Eco mismanagement from Zlo. Uh, too much reclaim, I guess, and not enough uh, mixes teching, but he did realize. And now uh, he's probably going to have to build some extra power. Yeah, he just started. He's that. building a strap bomber, which is probably why he was stalling. Right. There's so many interceptors on the other side of the map. I'm amazed that Ajax is not able to pick up these drops. He could split his air force in half, and he would still have a numerical advantage over the interceptors on Zlo's side. 
Yeah, that's true. At least a very realistic chance uh, of winning. Zlo's skipping building AS up. He is just continuing to build strap bomber, so he might be going for an air snipe. Either that or enough damage to the infrastructure that he can sweep him. Strap bomber coming to the front, so he's not waiting for the second one. He may just be going in for a dive on the sniper bots. Yeah, that's what he's doing. Yep, there it is. Now his principles can comfortably kite uh, the slipper army. I yep. Guess. And every pass that strap bomber takes does a great job of softening up those T3 targets. Even if he isn't killing them outright, every time it passes, that's two less Percival shells it takes to kill that particular unit. Speaking of Percivals, another drop on the right hand side. He's going to get Percivals into the rear of Ajax's base as well. What I like to see is uh, the use of strat bombers and t1 bombers at the same time because when you make a strat everybody's going to react to it and move there in a way that uh, the t1 interceptors which are slower than the strat uh, are going to like actually intercept it and not fly past it sort of right and that requires yes. a lot of attention and nobody watches out for the t1 bombers which at the same time uh, take out the upgrading mixes and build power in the base so like <laughs> You might as well, whenever you uh, make a strat, uh, also make some T1 bombers from uh, like a support factory, and uh, from the onset plan on using them together because you know everybody's only going to watch for the strat, and not for what else is happening. Then by default, you know where his air units are. Yeah, exactly. It's always frustrated me how interceptors uh, they have the same flight speed as strat bombers. So if you do miss your turn, you cannot catch a strat bomber with interceptors. Aren't strats actually a bit faster than inties? I don't think so. Let me actually go check. Um, I can do a quick comparison here. We'll snag an interceptor and we will snag a strat bomber over in the unit database. Ajax is actually 10k mastery claim ahead of slow. That's pretty impressive. Probably from all of the raiding that's been happening, as those units die, he's able to reclaim them in the rear of the base. Right, yeah. He had uh, multiple, uh, for multiple portions of the game, he had lost uh, mixes, and that's how it stays even, I suppose. Those two players, after 32 minutes, actually have the same score of 144k. <laughs> ridiculously balanced games this tournament you are correct the strat bombers are two ticks faster on speed um, the difference is that the interceptors have a much higher acceleration and turn speed so if you're coming out of a turn the interceptors are more likely to be able to snag the strat bomber but once the strat bomber's traveling in a straight line, it will very, very slowly pull away from the interceptor grouping. Percivals are brutal. I did not think that they were going to be able to stop all of those Othams, but they did, and now Ajax is going to die. Two more shots. Boom. Yeah, wow. Well, <laughs> I guess slippers are not so great Holy without shields. Holy smokes. That escalated quickly. Like, there was so much noise on the map with uh, many things going on that Ajax probably just uh, had the wish to end this game in one push, regardless of the outcome, I suppose. That's why he. That's where, what, you're this... three games into the tournament at this Very point. You've been move. playing for a while. The map's been going for 33 minutes, and just frustration sets in with having to deal with everything going on. I can feel that. I, I know exactly what that feels like. <laughs> yeah, I think it's because Aslo applied such a decentralized style this game. It's more difficult to uh, deal with uh, intercepting raid and rebuilding uh, than uh, with doing it yourself. So it's uh, it's probably frustrating to play against. By the score, you could see that uh, there was not so much of a difference between those two players. And I think with the amount of, uh, of uh, T3 build power and uh, T1 fighters Adric had, he, uh, he could have a lot of time uh, to, to uh, at least stall as well as a T3 air and later get his own. 
But uh, if he hadn't he... thrown the Othams, he would have been able to defend his base, and he might have been able to go for a chicken. He right, had the yeah. reclaim and eco for it. Like, us casters know that the game had been perfectly balanced in terms of score, but uh, to him it may have looked like he was losing simply because of the uh, amount of uh, aggression from Zlo. But like, yeah, if exactly. you take a look at the map, you can see that Zlo <clears throat> still has many T1 mixes. So that's something you may miss out on when you're playing the game yeah. and just getting raided all the time. 